So we'll drop this URL. Uh, now it's going to fetch that dev URL and we have all the posts in there. And now I found 60. So just like that, I solved what could have been like literally a multi-day headache by uh, prompting AI. Hey, it's Matt. Today I'm going to show you how I used Replit to migrate my blog posts over to a different platform. It might not sound exciting, but if you've ever had a blog, if you've ever had to migrate frameworks, um, you know, it can be a huge pain and usually take like a half day or even take like multiple hours over the course of several weeks to either write scripts or do manual work to kind of like coalesce information into the right format. Um, and I think there's a larger point to be made here, which is that um, with AI and with the tooling that we have today, as the tools get better, right, the time it takes us to build things uh, gets drastically shorter. And so we can have sort of disposable software. Um, that's an idea that's been discussed on Twitter a bit, on X a bit. Um, and the idea is, hey, I can actually spin something up with AI with a tool like Replit um, that I wouldn't have been able to otherwise, or that might've taken me a really long time before uh, some of these tools existed. And so now, because it's so easy to do that, it's actually the best choice for doing things like migrating or even quick one-off jobs. You may never use this tool again, um, but I'm gonna share it with you in case you wanna do the exact same thing. So you don't even have to go through the work that I did. Uh, but first we're gonna talk about the problem. I'll talk about my solution and then uh, we'll kind of like talk about that meta point that I just made. So the problem, my old blog, um, basically limits RSS feeds to 10 items. So here's like the RSS for my old blog. And if I try to take this uh, and go to the Substack import, right, and click get started, um, it's gonna find my old blog, okay, cool, and say there are 10 posts found. I know there are like 70 posts, right? Like there are a lot more than 10 on here. Um, so that's no good. This would take a really long time. There's actually no way to uh, like, iterate through these posts, I guess, other than like deleting them or doing something weird. So that's no good. I went online and looked for uh, a bunch of resources of like, oh, is there maybe um, like a site that would scrape my blog and turn it into an RSS feed that would allow me to do this import? No dice, they're all paid or didn't work or the functionality wasn't really just turning it into an RSS feed. It was like something else, right? So no free tool existed from my research. Um, and at this point, I'm like, man, I'm gonna have to get hacky. I'm gonna have to import this to multiple platforms and have to do all this stuff. But what I realized is if I could just create a proxy RSS feed, so create like a ephemeral RSS feed um, that only lived, it didn't need to live for a while. It could be only live for a few minutes. I could pass that RSS feed into Substack and get all the posts. So basically what I just need to do was generate an RSS feed that had every post from my blog. So what did I do? Um, I went to Replit and I said, Okay, well, I know what I want. I just want a basic Python REPL. So, you know, we have some great AI tools uh, here for like generating things, but I actually just created a blank Python uh, REPL. Um, and once I did that, I went to Assistant, which is kind of like uh, our AI system for chatting uh, to create functionality. I said, hey, um, I'm going to drop in the documentation for this library called FeedGen, Python FeedGen. Uh, which can create RSS feeds in Python. And I said, help me generate an RSS feed for my blog with a Flask server and the following package. Because like in my mind, I knew, okay, we probably want to host this thing on a server using Flask. Um, and then we're going to want to generate the feed using this feed gen platform. Um, I also kind of knew, hey, we need to scrape the contents of my old site. We need to bring that over to the new one. Uh, and we're probably going to do that using something like Beautiful Soup because that's a really well-known framework. It's a really simple framework. Um, we didn't need to get fancy. The page is very straightforward to scrape. Uh, so you can see kind of what's going on here. We got a Flask server with an RSS endpoint and Atom endpoint. Didn't really even need that. Um, and then something I noticed was that I need to actually update uh, the contents of, of what was being scraped. So I, I passed in sort of the UL class. I did that by inspecting um, the, uh, like the individual elements to determine what class I needed. Um, that's another really good tip, right? Like if we go here and we go back to uh go to the actual blog and you're not familiar with uh dev tools right you can pop this open in chrome and then we can look at right we can look at uh exactly what's going on here so you can see okay this is inside of a span uh, we have an i tag there's this ul class with embedded blog posts those are the blog posts i want to fetch 
And if you haven't used DevTools before, whether you're using it inside, outside of Replit, or you're just like a hobbyist or whatever, as you can start to understand the classes and understand how pages are laid out in this like HTML, it can be really useful for then passing information back to AI tools, back to uh, these systems as context, because AI is really good at reading this type of stuff or understanding uh, what's going on. And it's certainly better when you can give it context than when you don't give it any context. So I kind of was like, hey, we want to scrape my blog. Um, we want to get this thing. And it's like, yep, you're going to need beautiful soup and requests. So Assistant installed those for me. Um, walking through the commands here, uh, the post element still wasn't working after this. It still wasn't scraping properly. So I actually just gave it the, um, the element. And you can actually see that here. I just like literally pasted in the HTML for my site. Again, AI is really good at picking this apart. So um, after I gave it that, right, what happened? Well, now it's getting better at finding the post content. I can see that in the diffs. Um, it's getting better at extracting times and date times. Uh, we brought in Python date util. Um, and ultimately, this kind of helped me populate the feed entry. I think we got to a point where it was working. Um, but it wasn't including the full text content. So how do we get the text content for each post? You actually have to click through the post to get the, you know, click through the link to get the post. And so in my follow-up, I'm saying, okay, well, now I want you to include the full text content. You should include images. You should format the content so it can be properly parsed. And so I, then I gave it an example. I said, for example, here is, a, here is some content on the following page. So basically what I did was I went to a post uh, and, you know, this is the announcement that I'm switching blogs, but I went to a post, copied the HTML, um, and then uh, we were all set. Um, and so, again, AI is really good with examples. I was able to handle that, although I got an error. Again, I just pasted that error in, fixed it. Um, most of the time I get errors, like one-off errors. You can just supply the error to, to the AI system you're using, to Assistant, um, and it'll take care of that. Um, next, right, like the proper, still had some problems with fetching that content. Uh, I think that might have went on for a little while. Um, it required some kind of uh, more context, some more kind of playing around with the syntax. Um, and then the final thing was that it was basically reloading the RSS feed every time I ran the function, um, every time I ran the REPL. Uh, so that was no good. Um, but once we got done here, I'm going to actually go to the shell and just go python main.py. Um, once we got done, uh, what I had, and I'm going to let this run, was um, basically, uh, this might take a second to load because it's going to scrape in real time, uh, an RSS feed that dynamically generates based on the contents of that page. And so more than just listing 10 items, it could list the full 60 or 70 uh, that I had. And so now we can see we get this um, RSS feed with the contents of every single post, which is exactly what I want. Because even development REPLs are live, I can actually go to the dev URL here, um, get this RSS feed, right? And now I have exactly what I need uh, to run that import. So if we go back, before it said it found 10 posts, we go down here, um, we say like, okay, let's import posts, we'll drop this URL. Uh, now it's gonna fetch that dev URL and we have all the posts in there. And now I found 60. So just like that, I solved what could have been like literally a multi-day headache by uh, prompting AI like six or seven times and just understanding what tool to use. And I think this is the future of software. This is the future of solving problems and disposable software, right? Like if I think back a few years ago, I've migrated blogs like many times, perhaps too many times, I might be too quick to jump the gun there. Uh, but um the bottom line is uh i'd have to write a script i'd have to pull all my posts i'd have to export them as markdown and pull them into a csv and re-upload them you don't have to do that anymore right now you can use a tool like replit you can use a tool like assistant and agent to generate tools that help you get tasks done and even if that task is only something you have to do once if this tool saves you five or six hours you get it done and you share that code with people and you move on it's pretty amazing um and so this is sort of the world of disposable software this is an example of some personal software that helped me solve a problem and i think is really important so again i'm matt this has been how i kind of solve the problem of blog migration until next time peace